All right, I hate to do that to you. Sorry to cut the music off like that, but we're at our time. Uh, and uh, I want to make sure and honor your time tonight. So thank you for joining us. Uh, I want to say good evening to everyone who is with us on Facebook Live. Please be sure to like and share. All of you who are watching on Facebook Live, please be sure to like and share. Good evening to all of you who are joining us now on Facebook Live. And um, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you to everybody who's with us on Zoom. And um, we're going to pray, ask God to bless our time. And, uh, and we're going to get into our lesson tonight. All right. So if you would, please bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the gift of life and thank you, Lord, for how you have kept us and preserved our lives uh, even up until this moment. Uh, and uh, Father, we don't take for granted the grace that you extend to us. We're so grateful uh, for your grace over our lives. And tonight, Lord, we are gathered for the purpose of Bible study. We confess that we can't know your word without the person and presence of the Holy Spirit leading us. And so tonight we pray that you would, by the power, person, and presence of the Holy Spirit, lead us tonight as we engage your word. Speak to our hearts. Help us, God, in very practical ways tonight to become better disciples, to be closer followers, to be greater evangelists, that our light would shine even that much brighter as a result of having heard your word tonight. And I thank you for each person who is with us, those who are with us on Zoom, those who join us by Facebook Live, those who may be watching because somebody shared tonight's broadcast. Pray, God, that you would, by your Holy Spirit, meet each of us individually so that our lives would more effectively reflect, reflect your glory. Thank you for our time tonight. We commit this time to you and we respect and acknowledge your presence now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Once again, good evening, good evening, good evening. You have joined us at St. Luke Church in Berryville, Virginia. Uh, for our midweek Bible study on the move to discipleship. And tonight, 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 we begin this short series uh, around the spiritual disciplines. And we've chosen to entitle this series, Is It In You? Is It In You? All right, and so tonight, that's, uh, that's where we find our place tonight. You want to get your Bibles tonight? Meet us in the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. That's over in the New Testament. Part of those five T's. You know, you got General Electric Power Company, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. And then you got those five T's right there together. 1 Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians, First Timothy, Second Timothy, and Titus. All right. So if you get close to Galatians, Colossians, you get close to those books, you don't have far to go. First Timothy, chapter four. First Timothy, chapter four, verses seven and eight is where we will launch from tonight. All right, this is uh, On the Move to Discipleship, Midweek Bible Study with St. Luke Church in Berryville, Virginia. If this is your first time joining us tonight, we share our lesson in three phases, discussion, discovery, and direction. Our discussion section is, using a, is usually an icebreaker uh, around our subject matter, you know, kind of get us thinking, um, maybe to make us laugh, uh, you know, just kind of do that, break the ice. Uh, our discovery section is where we engage the word of God, see what the Bible has to say about our subject matter. And then our direction section is a take home piece, maybe 
uh, some memory verses, maybe um, thought-provoking question, uh, maybe uh, a question that you know that we want to get an answer back from you on. All right, so discussion, discovery, direction. That's how we break out our lesson tonight. And uh, you're going to see this pop up tonight. Talk to me. This will be an opportunity for you to chime in with me. If you are on Zoom, you can unmute uh, and, uh, and and you can uh, you can answer uh, the uh, the relevant question there uh, when you see this talk to me screen pop up. And then, of course, if you're with us on Facebook Live, uh, when you see talk to me come up, you can type your responses in the comments and we'll do our best to read them as they come in. All right, so let's dive in to our lesson tonight. As we begin, I got some anecdotes tonight. Hopefully they'll make you smile. Um, here's a good one. A retired couple decided they should walk two miles a day to stay in shape, retired couple decided they were going to walk two miles a day to stay in shape. They chose to walk a mile out on a lonely country road so they would have no choice but to walk back. At the one mile mark on their first venture, the man asked his wife, do you think you can make it back all right or are you too tired? <laughs> oh, no, she said. I'm not tired. I can make it fine. Good, he replied. I'll wait here. You go back, get the car, and come get me. <laughs> All right. I got another one. <laughs> Daily exercise for the non athletic. All right. Daily exercise <laughs> for the non athletic. A calorie guide citing a recent medical association report. Proper weight control and physical fitness cannot be attained by dieting alone. Many people who are engaged in sedentary occupations do not realize that calories can be burned by the hundreds by engaging in strenuous activities that do not require physical exercise. Here's the guide to calorie burning activities and the number of calories per hour they consume. <laughs> Beating around the bush, 75 calories. Jumping to conclusions, 100 calories. <laughs> Climbing the walls, 150 calories. Swallowing your pride, 50 calories. Passing the buck, 25. Throwing your weight around, and depending on your weight, that'll be between 50 and 300 calories. Uh, dragging your heels, 100 calories. Pushing your luck, 250. Making mountains out of mole hills, 500. Hitting the nail on the head, 50. <laughs> Wading through paperwork, 300. I think I might have. I think I might have burned about about uh, 300,000 calories on that one today. Bending over backwards, 75. Jumping on the bandwagon, 200. Running around in circles, 350. Eating crow, 225. Tooting your own horn, 25. Adding fuel to the fire, 150. Opening a can of worms, 50 calories. Hopefully, hopefully you got a chuckle out of that. Hopefully that made you smile. Um, our verse tonight talks about physical exercise and all. And so I just thought that would be a great way to kind of open our lesson tonight. All right, so we jump into our discovery section. Again, our focus text tonight is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. And if you've got your Bible, I hope you're there with us tonight. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verses seven and eight from the New International Version reads this way. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, 
For godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Got it? First Timothy chapter four, verses seven and eight. Listen, you wanna get this tonight. Paul warns Timothy to avoid old wives' tales and myths, all right? Paul warns Timothy to avoid old wives' tales and myths. Avoid, avoid. If you're keeping notes tonight, your key word for this first part of verse seven is avoid. Paul warns Timothy to avoid old wives tales and myths. Look, these words, old wives tales and myths essentially mean false teaching, all right? Old wives tales and myths. Um, I think uh, King James says profane and what's the other word that King James uses? I don't have it in front of me, but I know he says, oh, fables, 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 fables. Profane, like profane myths and fables or something like that is, is King James. Those words essentially mean false teaching. Paul tells Timothy, in a nutshell, avoid false teaching, all right? If you are taking notes tonight, if you are writing this down, this is what you wanna write down. Avoid false teaching. All right. False teaching is worldly. In other words, it is opposite that which is holy. All right. We are to avoid the kind of teaching that is opposite that which is holy. Now, let me, let, me, um, let me qualify. I think my, I think my internet just went crazy. Let me qualify this statement opposite that which is holy, all right? When I say opposite that which is holy, I'm not talking about a doctrinal statement. All right. And what I mean by that is I'm not talking about what the edict of a religious organization is. All right. Or what a denominational standard is. When I'm talking about opposite that which is holy, I'm talking about that which runs diametrically opposed to what the word of God teaches, all right? False teaching, you wanna always pay attention to this, false teaching will have a hint of truth, enough to draw you in and then foul you up. Did you get that tonight? All right. False teaching always holds an element of truth. And that element of truth is enough to draw you in and then mess you up. Paul says, avoid false teaching. 
all right? It is worldly. By worldly, we mean that which is sensual, that which appeals only to the gratification of the flesh, worldly, all right? False teaching is worldly teaching. It only appeals to self-gratification. And Paul tells Timothy in his day to avoid false teaching. And that word stands for us today in scripture to remind us to avoid false teaching. All right? We are to avoid it. We are to avoid false teaching. All right, but Reverend, how do I know it's false? You compare it to what the word of God says. And if you don't know how to do that, that's why you have pastors and elders and ministers, deacons, deaconess. These are the people who should be so ground in the word of God that they should be able to answer. I'm not saying answer every question that you have, but they ought to be able to lead you in discovering the truth of the word of God. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say this. If, listen, if the, if the ministers, and the elders and the deacons and the deaconess in our church don't know how to lead people to the truth of the word of God, you probably shouldn't be sitting in that title. Oh boy. All right. It's, it's going to be impossible for you to teach somebody else how to avoid false teaching when you don't know the word of God yourself, all right? And so he says, avoid false teaching. Before you can begin this journey into the spiritual disciplines, you got to be able to avoid false teaching teaching. All right, here's our first talk to me tonight. How do myths, fables, old wives tales, profane stories, and the like, how do they differ from the word of God? How do myths, fables, old wives tales, how do they differ from the word of God? Let me hear from you tonight. All of our folk on Facebook Live, please type your comments into the chat. To all of our folk on Zoom, you can unmute and jump in here in this conversation with me tonight. Y'all talk back to me. How, how do, how do myths, fables, old wives tales differ from the word of God. Y'all jump in here with me tonight. This water not too deep. It's not too deep tonight. So y'all mm -hmm. ready to jump in. We only we only about ankle deep tonight. Let me see. All right, got a response on Facebook Live. Keisha says they are rumors, but the word of God is true. All right. I like it. I like it. Go ahead, Janice. Did you unmute? Yes, I did. Hey, what you got? I was, I was, I was going to say that myths and fables are man-made. They're made up by man, and they can go either way. But the word of God was um, inspired by God is the truth, the very truth, and it doesn't change. Okay, good, good. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Sandy Reynolds on Facebook Live says there's always a little something added to the story, usually to fit an agenda. 
God's word remains the same. Good, good, mm -hmm. good. How do myths and fables, old wives tales differ from the word of God? Y'all saying some good stuff tonight. Let mm -hmm. me hear from you. Let me hear from you. Anybody else want to jump in here before I move on? Anybody else? Going once, going twice. All right, I'm going to move on. Thank y'all so much for your responses. Listen to what the word of God says. Turn your Bible to St. John. And I know I have it up here on the screen, but I want you to turn to this in your Bible. I want you to see this in your Bible, and I want you to mark this in your Bible. John chapter 17, verse 17. Let me see, did I have somebody come in the chat on that? All right, what did Miss Emily say? Okay, Miss Emily, oh, nope, that's, let me see. This is, uh, let me see. Okay, this is from, this is from, Joyce, they are fairy tales, untruthful, okay? Miss Emily says something on Facebook and I can't see it. Okay, all right, good. Old wives tales are passed on, okay, I see it. All right, good, I'm glad I got all these devices up tonight. Old wives tales are made up and are passed on without a word of truth. God's word is always true. Very good, look here. St. John, chapter 17, verse 17, all right? Mm -hmm. I want you to commit this verse to memory. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is true, all right? And I just quoted King James right there. I just quoted the King James, all right? NIV, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Get this one more time. St. John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Now, I want to make this distinction. If you're looking at this in your Bible, you're probably seeing this in red letters, which denotes that Jesus is speaking. This is John chapter 17, all right? This is Jesus in the garden praying to his father, all right? This is where he prays for, uh, he prays for his disciples, he prays for those that are in the world. He prays for those that are to come, those who will be followers. He prays for us. This is John chapter 17. And listen to what he prays in John chapter 17. He prays in John chapter 17. He prays, uh, I don't want you to take them out of the world but I want you to protect them while they're in the world. And then he says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. I want you to get this tonight. Jesus says of the word of God that the word of God is truth. I want you to get this tonight. There is much to be said about this in the world today. There are many who will dispute that the word of God, the Bible that we read today, the 66 books in this canon that we have, there are many who will dispute that it is not truth. But Jesus says of the word of God, that the word of God is truth. And it's very interesting. I don't mean to go off on a tangent here, but it is very interesting that Jesus would say 
here in John chapter 17, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth right here in John chapter 17. But when Jesus is introduced way back in John chapter one, it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And if you continue to read down later on, it says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. And the fact of the matter is, is that Jesus says here in John chapter 17 and verse 17, sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is truth. Therefore, if Jesus is the living word of God, Jesus is the truth. And he is the one who sanctifies us, watch this, by his word. Get it tonight. Get it tonight. Jesus says that the word of God is truth. And then he says that the effect that the word of God should have on every Christ follower, I want you to get this tonight, the effect that the word of God should have on every Christ follower is that the word of God should sanctify them. We don't talk about this in church too much anymore. But to be sanctified is to, watch this, have a regular and ongoing relationship with the word of God. Without the word of God, there is no sanctification because Jesus prays in John 17, 17, sanctify them by thy what? Thy truth. And then he qualifies it by saying thy word is true. So if you are regularly in the word of God, the word of God will sanctify you. I don't have to put my hands on you in order for you to be sanctified. No bishop needs to has to put their hands on you in order for you to be sanctified. You don't have to run to the priest and have him sprinkle water on your head in order for you to be sanctified. We don't have to have no long prayer service for you to be sanctified. Get connected in a regular discourse with the word of God and the word of God has the power to sanctify you. Why? Because the word of God is God. That's what the Bible says. Are y'all with me tonight? So Jesus says, sanctify them by thy truth. Remember, Paul tells us first to do what? Avoid false teaching, but we also need to adhere to the truth, all right? Avoid false teaching, adhere to the truth, sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is truth. You got it? All right. Listen to what he says at the end of verse seven. I see you back there, Wes. God bless you, man. Uh, look, look at, look at what he says here uh, at the end of verse seven. He says, rather train yourself to be godly. Get this. Train yourself to be godly. Did you get that? Underline that part in your Bible. Train yourself. Stop right there. Train yourself. Wait, one more time. Train yourself. Did you get this tonight? Train yourself to be godly. You know why? Because nobody can run in your lane but you. What does it say in Hebrews chapter 12, 
Verse 1, wherefore, King James Version, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with patience the race which is set before us, right? We are to lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us, right? And run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy, verse 3, which was set before him, endured the cross, despising his shame, and has now sit down at the right hand of the throne of God and forever make it intercession for us. Listen, you have the responsibility to run your race. I can't run it for you. I, listen, you cannot even pass me the baton where all my athletes at. You can't even pass me the baton in this race. You got to run your race for yourself in your lane. But here's the great thing. That verse in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 says this, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses cheering us on. That means that there are people who have run their race, they finished the race, they're seated in the stands, and they're cheering for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I take courage in knowing that both of my grandmothers sit up in those stands and they're doing what? they cheering for me. My father is up in those stands and he's cheering for me, but it is my responsibility to train myself in godliness. Are y'all getting this tonight? You have a personal responsibility to train yourself in godliness. Nobody can do it for you. You cannot be godly vicariously through anybody, not the deacons, not the pastors, not your mom and them, not your grandma, not ain't Tootie and them. No, you got to be, listen, you got to train yourself in godliness. Boy, I wish we was in the building. I have somebody holler, train yourself. Woo! Lord have mercy. I'm getting excited on that. All right, calm down. Nope, stay high. All right, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you got to train yourself. Train yourself to be godly. Are you with me? Every athlete has a coach. Yeah. But no coach ever gets on the floor when it's time for the athlete to perform. All right. Okay. Okay. Let me let me use because y'all y'all looking at me funny. Let me use some let me use some grandmother wisdom here. All right. Here's some here's some grandmother wisdom. Y'all heard it this way, but you didn't really hear it connected to a verse like this. All right. Every tug got to sit on his own bottom. Don't act like y'all ain't never heard that before. Don't even don't even act don't even act like y'all ain't never heard that before. I know y'all from the country. I know. I know y'all from the country. Every tub, y'all know that? That's train yourself to be godly. Can't nobody do it for you but you. Oh boy. All right. I'm going to move on cuz my time is running out. Train yourself to be godly. Listen, don't abandon godliness. All right? We got to avoid false teaching. We have to adhere to the truth and then don't abandon godliness. Listen. Stop telling folk that you're going to put your salvation down. Oh, I mean, y'all know how we do. We get, 
we get high in our emotions and we immediately want to tell for wait a minute let me, let me put my salvation down for a minute <clears throat> and then we want to tell them a thing or two help me somebody don't abandon godliness don't abandon all right godliness is having a proper attitude and response toward God. Get this. Godliness is having a proper attitude and response toward God. You got it? Exercising godliness demands much from us. If you're going to be godly, then you need to get ready for some rigorous work, some strenuous exercise, some extreme spiritual fitness. Exercising godliness demands much from us. First, it demands self-sacrificing. If you're going to train yourself to be godly, you must be self-sacrificing. Y'all with me? Listen to my folk on Facebook Live. If you're with me, just hit that thumbs up. Let me know that y'all with me. I can't, I can't see y'all shouting in y'all living room. Self-sacrificing. Y'all help my wife out. I know she hitting the light. That's her keep hitting the light. I'm joking. <laughs> Self-sacrificing. All right? If you're going to train yourself to be godly, you must be self-sacrificing. But look, that's not all. If you're going to train yourself to be godly, you must exercise self-discipline. Listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you. Confession, good for your soul, bad for your reputation. I struggle with self-discipline. All right? I struggle with self-discipline. All right. Let me tell y'all where I struggle with self-discipline. Around the food I eat, man. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. The whole, listen, the whole food thing for me relies a hundred percent on me. Come on here. And if I listen, if I learn how to be more disciplined, self disciplined around food, I might be more self disciplined woo, in other spiritual ways. Help me, somebody. Woo. Woo. That's a little close to home for some folk tonight. Mm. Got to be self-sacrificing. You got to have self-discipline. But then watch this. You got to have self-control. If you don't have self-control, you'll never be self-disciplined. Oh, boy. Oh boy. And watch this. Dig this. Self control is the fruit of the spirit. The fruit, fruit of the spirit. Don't miss this. Fruit of the spirit means product of what the spirit does in your life. So perhaps, Pastor Pope, I ain't even talking to y'all tonight. Perhaps Pastor Pope 
The reason why you have difficulty as self-discipline is because you won't allow the Holy Spirit to have control of your eating. I'm going to have to go back and look at this for myself and probably put it on replay right there at that part. Whew. Now, watch this. You ain't got to answer. Please don't. Please do not unmute and do not respond to this question. But I told y'all, I told y'all what my joint is. I told y'all what my thing is. It's this whole self-control allowing the Holy Spirit to make me eat better. Help me. What's yours? Don't don't answer. Don't even fix your mouth to say it. Remember, remember your grandmother said, it? don't fix your mouth to say it. Remember that? <laughs> what is the thing? What is it? that you have not yet given over to the Holy Spirit to have control of in your life. Ooh. Maybe it's your Amazon account. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. And now, 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 every time the preacher talk about money in church, I got a problem. Why you always talk about money? Because you always spending your money on Amazon. Help me, somebody. That church are always begging for money. No, we're not always begging for money. If you got off of Amazon, you might have a couple quarters to share. Help me, somebody. When it's time to do some mission work, preach, Paul. Are y'all with me tonight? Woo! Woo! I know some shoes getting tight this evening. Woo! <laughs> but listen, training in godliness demands this of us. Demands this of us. Y'all got it. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. All right, let me see. Wait a minute first. Let me make it so y'all can unmute on Zoom. Boom, oh, there's an unmute. All right, here's our question. How can we train ourselves in this way? How can we train ourselves to be godly? How can we train ourselves to be godly? All right, to all my folk on Facebook Live, I need y'all to jump in the comments here. How can we train ourselves to be godly? Let me see what we got. <laughs> I like it, Alvin. Alvin on, on Zoom said, Alvin said, just do it. I like it. Mr. Pearl says, surrender completely to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I like it. Yeah. Go ahead, Janice. Yeah. I would say, I would say to practice it every day. Practice it every day. Every day. Every day. Just practice. do a little bit every day and then it becomes um practice make perfect. How about that? How about that? How about that? You know, there's this, there's this idiom, there's this idiom in, uh, in business when, you know, uh, when there's a big project in front of somebody and they're trying to figure out how can they get it done, this idiom usually comes up. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Help me. <laughs> same idea, same principle applies here to the life spiritual. How do you train yourself to be godly? One step at a time. 
Let me see. We got some more folk here. Dylan Payne said, stay mm -hmm. in the word. Lucinda Bean said, pray about it. Shelly Allen said, spending time with the Lord and have a relationship. Emily Williams says, study that one got away from you. Study and live in the word. Uh, Karen Diggs said, be accountable to someone. Hold up. Let's stop right there for a minute. Let me pin that one up. Did y'all catch that? Bay, don't don't let me miss uh Mike Hebron. Don't 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 let me miss that one. Look, I pinned this one up on listen, I pinned this one up on, on Facebook Live. Be accountable to someone. Do you know what an accountability partner is? Mm -hmm. An accountability partner is a person who has permission to tell you the truth regardless, and you can't get mad at them. Help me somebody. They are bold enough to be mm -hmm. honest with you about who you are and what you are and where you are to help you become better than you are. Help me, somebody. You need an accountability partner. Get somebody who will go in with you. <laughs> I like it. Thank you for that, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Hebron says, by obeying and following God's word. Sandy says, first, you have to recognize that you need to train. If you don't do that, the training will never begin. You're absolutely right. Reading the word as well. Shelly Allen, Gloria Morton, by, renew by the renewing of your mind, keeping the word. Carol Fuller, like an athlete trains daily, and it becomes habit. And habits form you. Training is going is is ongoing in order to grow. I love it. They say it takes 21 days to develop a habit. I love it. I love it. I love it. Listen, I love it. Y'all, listen, y'all are teaching this lesson for me tonight. Train yourself in godliness. Train yourself in God. I gotta move on because our time is almost up. Man. What is good stuff tonight? Y'all got me excited. Look, look at this. Write this verse down. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. We talk about being trained in godliness. Get this. Then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Training in godliness. Training in godliness. And listen to what the master says. Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Listen, you want to underline that right there. All kinds of greed. That ain't just that ain't just money. All kinds of greed. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I just I just thought about some some stuff for myself. You can't buy a watermelon today, <laughs> and eat a whole watermelon today. That's greed. Help me, somebody. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my goodness! I don't care what size it is. Be on guard against all kinds of greed. Help me, somebody. Listen, and th listen, that is training whoop, in godliness. Are y'all with me tonight? Woo! Woo! Somebody sent me an email about 815. Put the watermelon down, Pastor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. How about that? Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. And y'all know that word all in the Greek mean all. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. How about that? How about this? First Thessalonians 
chapter 4, verses 3 through 8. First Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 3 through 8. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. Oh, there's our word again. That you should avoid, oh, there's our word again, sexual immorality. That each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. And that in this matter, no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins as we told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his holy spirit. First Thessalonians chapter four verses three through eight. Check the magazines and the books that you read. Check the websites that you visit. Help me somebody. How about this? How about this? Psalm 119, verse nine. You know, this is one of my favorite verses in all the scripture. How can a young man keep his way pure? By taking heed to God's word. How can I train myself to be godly? By living according to the word of God. Listen, we're at the end of our lesson tonight. And here's our direction. Over the next seven days, I want you to commit these two verses to memory. Psalm 119, verse 9. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. And just because it says young person, it doesn't mean it's, it's not talking about you. That's talking about you. All right? And then Luke 12, 15, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Listen, I hope that uh, this lesson tonight has challenged you. We're going to continue our discussion uh, next week talking about spiritual discipline. We actually, next time, we should actually get into um, some actual categories of spiritual discipline. Next time, we'll talk about internal disciplines and external disciplines. Um, so please, lock in for next week um, because because uh, I want you to get this. This was good tonight. Um, I hope that you guys were blessed by the word of God. Hope that you were challenged tonight by the word of God. And uh, I pray that your life will, will become different and better uh, because of the word of God. Listen, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter two and verse 10, Ephesians chapter two, verse 10, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God prepared in advance for us to do. What we say at St. Luke Church related to that verse is this, that God created you with a purpose, for a purpose, on purpose. And it is our prayer that you will go and live in purpose, all right? God bless you tonight. I commend you to him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or imagine according to the power that is at work in you. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus, world without end. 
Amen. God bless you. We'll see you guys next time. Hey, listen, let me just, let me put this bug in your ear. Um, there may not be a Saturday night check-in. Um, we are headed to uh, St. Vincent University. I'm sorry, St. Vincent College in Latrobe, Pennsylvania uh, for the graduation of our mechanical engineer, Kyle David Pope. Uh, and that's that's happening this weekend. So um, uh, there may not be a check-in on Saturday night. We shall see. If it does happen, uh, I'll be coming to you live from Latrobe, Pennsylvania. All right. God bless you. Y'all have a good night and uh, look forward to seeing you the next time.